start talking about what we felt we wanted our topic for you Sunday it's what was on our hearts the kids were like we have to do something about running right and I was like okay and so anyway um from that and through conversation and stuff Ryan actually had a vision of a skit and so we're gonna do a skit for you and let it kind of transition into a message so as y'all ready runners you may begin stretching Nathan what are you wearing? They're boots. Yeah, this is a race. I think they look good. <sighs> Dylan, you look well prepared at least. Thank you. I'm always prepared. Becca, this isn't a dancing competition. It's a race. It is? It's fine. I can run. It's okay. Okay. Man, I'm going to do so bad. No, you know, we're all going to do bad, so it's okay. It's fine. I can run. It's okay. You, can, you got it? Okay. I think I'm going to lose. You probably are, but it's okay. <laughs> hey, you want this extra Dr. Pepper? Sure, man. Thanks. You're welcome. Dylan, come here. This is a race. You need to be healthy. I'm drinking Dr. Pepper. Thank you. I put you in the 800 for today. I know it's going to feel like you can't run anymore, but I need you to just keep going. All right, coach. All right. You guys got to keep running, all right? All right. Sure. Runners, on your mark. Get set. It might be tough, but... but I got this. Go. <laughs> Good job, guys. So today we, we've decided we will kind of order our message for you, if the speakers will go ahead and slip up here. Kind of the idea of on your mark. You got to get on your own mark, kind of like Dylan already touched in the children's sermon. So if it makes you feel any better, we did that children's sermon even in first service, but they didn't want to race. Okay, you're out there. That's good. Okay, but uh, so anyway, but we did it because it had a point, right? That sometimes it doesn't seem like it's fair when we look side to side. But it's not about everybody else. It's about what God's called you to do. So on your mark, get set, and then go. So we got a few that are willing to share their hearts. So got some scripture for you. Will you please stand for the reading of God's word? Today comes out of 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins, run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're the one, you're after the one that's gold eternally. You don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. For the word of God, for the people of God. Please be seated. So when you're, when you're running a race, you want to be equipped. So when you're ready, you want to be equipped right. And we want, when we run the race of life, we want to be equipped. And this is what we're equipped with. This is what God has given us. And so when you run for a finish line, you always want to run, but it's not always eternal. It might just be for a little bit of time. Like if you do something good and you feel good, that might not last forever. It might last for a few minutes or a few days, but the one prize that's going to last forever is God's gift that he's given us. And when, uh, when Jesus asked the disciples to uh, go pray, they did is, all they did is sleep. And that's not what we want to do. We want to go, let go, let 
God's gift into the world and go spread his word. Okay, so I'm the first part of Get Set. Um, we're going to talk a lot about God's plan for us. Um, have any of y'all ever worked out? Raise hands, yeah. Um, have you ever eaten bad before a workout? <laughs> like, um, I don't know if any of y'all know this, but the fair just happened, and um, me and Jody do animals at the fair. We show them and stuff. So we're there the whole time. And this, not this weekend, but the past week, this past weekend, I, um, I was at the fair every single day. Um, so I got hungry while being at the fair. So of course I ate all the fried food and all the sweets and drank all the Dr. Peppers and lemonades that I wanted to. And then I had track practice on Tuesday. Not a good idea, guys, not a good idea. Um, coach decided that we were going to run sprints on the football field, and the sprint is called a suicide. If y'all know what that is, you're like, oh my gosh, how is she alive right now? Because it was rough. The ground was kind of wet too, so definitely not fun. Um, I have a verse for you, so please stand. Um, John 6, 55 through 58. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is from the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on the bread will live forever. So, oh, you may be seated. I don't So we, we've established that we should put the word and prayer that, and fellowship into our lives so that we can execute God's plan for us, correct? Um, have you ever gone to work and forgot to bring your lunch or you don't have time during your break to go get something extra so you're so hungry? You know that painstaking hunger that refuses to let your brain do the work that you're trying to get paid from? I mean... Your boss was nice enough to hire you for this job that's going to give you money, but you forgot to bring your food, and that's so you can't execute the, the work for the day. Um, by cutting out all the bad food or music and the friend that has that negative energy, you will still be hungry. So in the race of life or the race of God's plan, you can go ahead and cut all the bad stuff out. It's not that hard, but the real struggle is to be in that constant relationship with God. So you won't be hungry. So turn to God for the good food and the drink that will help us execute God's plan for us, which Becca said was the Bible. Okay, so I will basically be talking about the other part of Get Set, which is dressing accordingly to the race that you are running. And so I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 6, 11 through 18, and I will just basically be breaking it down and talking about what it means. So we're going to start in uh, verse 11, and it says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So this means that once you have accepted God into your heart, then you need to start dressing like he wants you to dress, and you need to start dressing in the armor of God. And once you do that, you will be able to handle anything that the devil will try to throw at you. So 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And this means that we don't need to be caught up in arguing with the people or our own flesh and blood and because um, we have the armor of God and we won't now wrestle with the devil because now that we have Jesus in our heart, he's going to come for us even more. But we'll be prepared for that because we'll have the armor of God. So um, 14 says, therefore, it says, stand 
Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And this means that now we have to put on the belt of truth, meaning we have to be true to everything we say and everything we do. And we have to put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning we have to be morally right and justifiable. 15 says, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And I said that this means um, for the shoes of our feet, we have to be ready, meaning we have to now be ready for anything that God wants, to, wants us to do. And because we are Christians, we are surrounding our life, we are surrendering our life to God. Therefore, we have to be ready for whatever he wants us to do. So 16 through 17 says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fam flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this means that now that we have, now we have to use the shield of faith to block us from any, anything the enemy will try to throw at us. And we have to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit to help prepare us for what is to come. And then finally, 18 says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So I said that we have to, so that now that we have the armor of God with us, we have to now pray and ask him what he wants us to do. And it says that we have to now keep alert because even though we have the armor of God, the enemy will still try to get in us. And um, so, but now we're prepared for that because that we have the armor of God on us. Okay, hello. <laughs> so, Becca talked about the ready part of Ready, Set, Go. Lori and Ryan talked about the set part, and I'll be talking about the go part. So, I'm not in sports. I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm more into music, but I think it could still relate really well to this. So, I had a competition yesterday with my solo on marimba, and uh, I have a director that helps me, like, get my solo good enough for the competition, I guess. Just like a coach that will help you run your race and like teach you what to do, like your technique and all that stuff. So our directors and coaches lead us through our race or our solo or whatever it is, just as God will lead you through life. So God, just like Lori said, you have to be ready for like whatever comes your way, whatever he throws at you. So God will kind of help you lead or lead you through life to like shed the word out onto his people, just as your leaders and directors and coaches will help you to do good on whatever, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. He will help you achieve your goals in life and shed the light onto the world. So that's all I have. <laughs> I don't know where y'all are in your life and in your race. Some of you may be thinking, I done did that and I'm not going to race again, Meg. Every day is a race. The second you get out of bed, feet hit the ground on your mark. Okay, racing to the bathroom. Gotcha. Cool. You're brushing your teeth, right? Get set. Every day, you're supposed to run with endurance. You're supposed to lay aside every weight because of what Christ did. We don't have to carry it. But the issue is, is we pick up weights along the way because we're looking, well, that's not fair. So-and-so is way faster than I am. That's not fair. And their lane is shorter. What's up with that, God? And we're so worried about comparing that we're not even running. We're just standing there pointing, pointing people away from the finish line. We're drawing attention away from the great race. Jesus, right? So we're supposed to throw aside those weights and focus in on who he is every day. All right, God. It may be tough, right? Dylan said, but I got this. 
I've got this because you're inside of me. I can do all things through you who strengthens me. Every day it's a choice. Uh, years ago, I actually ran a half marathon, and uh, I'm hoping to start training again, but it was this awesome time in my life, and I remember running and training for it, and there'd be times I'd be like, my body is like, stop it. Stop it right now. That's enough. Go sit down, get some water, you know, but I knew that I had a distance set in mind that I wanted to accomplish that day, right? And my body would be like, stop, sit down. You can't do this anymore. But once I finally got past that point, I could tell myself, like, you're fine. Be quiet. If they call it the runner's high, where all of a sudden you look, I mean, your body's just moving. And you're not even thinking about it. Your body's just doing it. That's what God wants for us. He wants us the quiet, the self-talk of hate, the self-talk of distraction, the self-talk of what we can't do. And he wants us to listen to him. I got this. There's a distance that he set for me. When I was training, I used to say, <laughs> if I can at least get to that tree, <laughs> and then I would get to that tree, okay, I'll try the next tree, right? Sometimes we have to look at life and just look at it one day at a time. If I can, God, if I can just focus on you for today, it's good. Okay, tomorrow, on your mark. Okay, God, I'm gonna get set, okay. I'm gonna read your word, okay. You want me to go to the grocery store, God? Okay, I'm taking you with me, yes. That's what he wants. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to put on the armor and be dressed and not be like Nathan in a race in boots? I mean, come on. It looks good, but it does not work well. <laughs> Are we prepared? Because, y'all, we have no idea when he's coming back. And there's a lot of lost souls out there. There's a lot of people that are so confused and they just need to know the power and the love of Christ and your testimony could be the opportunity for their breakthrough. But we're so caught up comparing that we're not sharing. So we gotta think about this in our life. Maybe you're in a place and you're like, Megan, I have stumbled so many times like Nathan up here, I just sit down. I'm gonna watch everybody else for a while. Get up. If you don't quit, you win. Just keep going. If you don't stop, it's all God wants. You got this. It's all going to be okay. As the praise team gets ready, we got some awesome kids. Aren't they great? Thank you all. As the praise team gets ready, I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know if maybe you're the one that's kind of stumbling around and not prepared. Or maybe you just know someone that God's put on your heart and you just want to come up and pray for him, the altars are going to be open. The sun sets free, always free.